गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स एंड डियर स्टूडेंट्स इट गिवस मी एम एस प्लेजर टू बी हियर अगेन फॉर माई कोर्स एयरक्राफ्ट सिस्टम्स आई हैव ऑलरेडी कंप्लीटेड माई कोर्स मॉड्यूल्स आई एम इन नाउ प्रॉब्लम सॉल्विंग एंड केस स्टडी सेक्शन ऑफ दिस एयरक्राफ्ट सिस्टम्स दिस इज माई फोर्टी सेकेंड लेक्चर The topic of this lecture is aircraft mission systems and a study on modern systems. This is my topic, and in this, I am going to discuss about mission systems of aircraft and how these things are working. As you know, I am Dr. Vaidhi Duvedi, professor from Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Hyderabad, India. As of now, I have completed. module 1 which covers the main four areas of aircraft systems that is aircraft structural systems or airframe system second pillar is aircraft vehicle system third pillar is avionic system and fourth is mission system here i am in the fourth pillar i am going to discuss about the mission in the previous one it was not discussed properly in detail it was not discussed but here it is beyond the syllabus i am going to discuss to enhance the skill and enhance the knowledge of the aircraft mission systems so that is the objective in this i am topics and co mapping of this is first one is aircraft mission and that is introduction it is also the and the CO one mission system also CO one magnetic anomaly detector it is called MAD also CO one defensive aid systems also CO one active protection system also CO one and helmet mounted display it is also coming under CO one so aircraft mission system so here we can see one fighter aircraft. especially this mission systems are very much related for the fighter and the military aircraft most of the military aircrafts are designed for different types of missions like this you can see here this aircraft this aircraft is in the combat mode different types of missiles bombs and so many other weapons are fixed here and this is going for some particular mission as for the mission this loading of this uh, weapons the systems are modified so here the term mission system encompasses everything other than avionics which directly affect the outcome of a military sorties other than avionics avionics will be fixed it will not be changed but mission will be changed as per the requirement if i want to go for a high range or a, if i want to attack a very long distance i can i may not be able to carry more weapons but at that mission what type of ammunition i should use that only ammunition i will take and i will go up to 2000 miles or 1500 miles or 3000 miles because i have to go and come back my aircraft has to go and come back and also it is not necessary that you will come back in the same route because that route may be obstructed so you should have some sufficient amount of emergency fuel by the alternate route so like this mission plans are changed as per the requirement of the aircraft so that is uh, very much important to understand the mission system of the aircraft so other than avionics whatever you are adding or deleting for the re required operation and performance they are called the mission system physical reality of the mission computer and the aircraft sensor so this is happening by the two things so one is the mission computer and the aircraft sensors these two things are separately made for different types of mission and these sensors are used for different types of work mission data to the process needed around the aircraft such as mission planning so for the mission planning also we need uh, mission data that has to be processed that is to be simulated that is to be implemented and then the result will 
come. This is the fighter aircraft in mission. Uh, I have taken from the reference three, and here also I have taken from the reference three. Requirement of mission system of airplane. So, what are the requirement of the mission system of any aircraft? Mostly, these aircrafts are the military aircraft. So, for the any military aircraft, what type of requirement is needed for a mission system? So, sensor fusion of airborne weapon system include combat ID and rule of engagement. So, th there is a combat ID. That ID will be given. Then only your system will work. That pilot of that aircraft will be given one ID. If you operate the computer by that ID, then only it will function. So, sensor fusion for airborne weapon systems, including combat ID and rules of the engagement. So, this is the first requirement. System integration and interoperability through secure data links and voice command. So, system integration and interoperability through secure data link and voice command. So, this can be operated by your voice command or by some data links. These things can be operated. Flight operations through flight scheduling, mission planning and debrief. So, you know that flights, we have to give the schedule in advance. Then we have to give the mission planning, how you will plan. And after your mission, completion of the mission, you have to come back and you have to give debrief to the your superior. That how you have accomplished, how you have done, and if you have any proof of your work, that has to, you, you have to display in front of your seniors after your completion of the mission. This is called the debrief. System performance prediction, assessment, trial planning, and trials data analysis. So, system performance prediction should be there. Then you have you should be able to assess that what you have done is it correct or not trial planning before that you have to trial and do the necessary planning trial data analysis has to be done system performance enhancement and tuning performance through mission data and software changes mission data operation mission data setting and mission data tools to be used now what is the mission system the mission systems are used for the military aircraft. The military aircrafts requires a range of sensors and computing to enable the crew to prosecute a designed mission. So, these military aircrafts will operate in certain amount of mission. This military aircraft requires a range of sensors. There are number of sensors and we need some special computer to enable the crew to prosecute the designated mission. Then the mission system gain information about the outside world from active and the passive sensor and process this information to form intelligence. So we should have the system gain information from the outside world, from active and the passive sensors and process this information to form an intelligent system. Major systems of the mission system used for the military aircraft. The military aircraft requires a range of sensors and the computing to enable the crew to prosecute designated mission. The mission systems gain information. So in military telecommunication, the terms electronic support that is ES or electronic support measures or ESM describes the division of electronic warfare involving action taken under direct control of an operational commander to detect, intercept, identify, locate, record and or analyze sources of radiated electromagnetic energy for the purpose of immediate threat recognition such as warning that fire control radar has locked on a combat vehicle, ship or aircraft or longer term operational planning. This is the electronic support measures. This is the device which support the 
electronic support for any mission system and this here the computers their cables this thing can be attached and in this way this ESM electronic service measures are working. Next I am going to talk about the mission equipments. So we have different types of measuring equipments, different types of equipments which is performed on aircraft. One of the very important component or equipment of this mission is the magnetic anomaly detector. It is also called MAD. So this magnetic anomaly detector to confirm the presence of large metallic objects under the sea surface. Submarines prior to attack is an instrument used to detect minute variation in the earth magnetic field. So what it does? The magnetic anomaly detector, it is mostly used to detect the submarine because if any ferrous material is there inside the water, the magnetic effect of that thing will be different than the normal. So if the, your uh, uh, submarine is present and you are giving some signal, magnetic signal, the different magnetic signal will return back if any metal object is there. That is the principle of the magnetic anomaly detector. Mostly these are used in aircrafts of uh, anti-submarine aircraft. The term refers specifically to magnometer used by the military forces to detect submarine. So how this thing we are using? Here we use the magnetometer. So this will detect any magnet difference of any magnetic field is available or not. If any ferrous thing is there, the magnetometer will identify that there is some magnetic and the magnetic your field will be different by military forces to detect submarine. Military MAD equipment is a dissident of geometric survey instrument used to search for minerals by detecting disturbances of normal north field. So if any metal or the ferrous metal is there, there will be a difference in the magnetic field and this magnetic field is measured by the magnetometer and by that we can find out that there is any object inside the sea or not. Then we can use another one is acoustic sensor to provide a beam, to provide a means of detecting and tracking the passage of underwater object. We use the acoustic sensors like sonar. Then we use the mission computing to collate the sensor information and to provide a fused data pictures to the cockpit or mission crew station. So first these sensors, magnetic anomaly detector or acoustic sensor will detect the signal and this will give in to the mission computing. That computer will detect what type of material and what type of object is present. This will collate the sensor information and to provide a fused data pictures to the cockpit or mission crew station. Defensive aids, next is the defensive aids to provide a means of detecting missile attack and deploying countermeasures. So another one is the defensive aids. So if your aircraft is flying and some missile is coming for attacking, how you will defense yourself? That is the meaning of the defensive aid. So all these military aircrafts to be equipped with such type of aids and that I am going to discuss in due course of time. So I, I will talk about operation of the magneto uh, anomaly detectors. So the to reduce the interference from electrical equipments or metal in the fuselage or the aircraft, the MAD sensor is placed at the end of the boom or on a towed aerodynamic device. So a MAD sensor is placed on the tail boom of the aircraft or it is hanged with some rope or something aerodynamic device. So it is behind this. Even so the submarine must be very near the aircraft position and close to the sea surface for detection of the uh, anomaly because magnetic fields decreases as the inverse cube of the distance. So that is the one, the drawback that you can only detect if it is you are very near to the water surface. And submarine also it is very deep 
then it is very difficult to detect because this anomaly uh, the signals the, ma the magnetic field which is generated by this system is inversely pro inversal inverse cube of distance so as the distance is increasing the disturbances will be very high in the cubic pattern the size of the submarine its hull composition and orientation as well as the water depth and the complexity of the natural magnetic field determine the detection range mad devices are usually mounted on aircraft so the size of the submarine its hull composition and orientation as well as the water depth and the complexity of the natural magnetic field determine the detection range mad devices are usually mounted on the aircraft so if you see in our indian navy uh, the old aircraft that il38 the il38 it is a propeller aircraft it was having it was having mad to detect submarine okay so that is the benefit and it was very effective equipments now i will talk about the next item which is the defensive aid system so this is also a, a mission system and for any military aircraft when they are flying always they are in the target and any enemy aircraft or enemy area or enemy missile can come and hit so how to defend yourself if such type of activities are happening any armored vehicle or your any buffers gun or anything is hitting if you are there or by the man um, man hold missile it, you might have seen in ukraine and all how this ukrainians are hitting the aircraft of the russian by the very small missiles and this is held by the uh, soldiers some two holders they will hold it and they will launch the missile so how this aircraft is defending such type of activities to escape from the zone so these are called the defensive aid system a defensive aid system it is also das is a military aircraft systems which defend it from attack by surface to air missile air to air missile and guided anti aircraft artillery so anti aircraft artillery it is fired from the ground it can be also from the missile launcher like surface to air missile or from aircraft if any aircraft is firing one missile to another aircraft it is called air to air missiles and guided anti aircraft artilleries are also there so how to escape how to defend from this type of targets a defensive aid system typically comprises chaff flares and electronic countermeasures combined with radar warning receivers to detect threats so in this we should have one chaff should be there flare should be there or some electronic countermeasures are there with the help of the radar uh, we can be used for detecting this on some modern aircraft the entire system is integrated and it is computer controlled allowing an aircraft to autonomously detect classify and act in an optical manner against a potential threat to its safety nowadays all this fighter aircrafts they are automatically by the computer itself will generate this all safe and flares and they will uh, fire accordingly as per the availability of the thrust the radar will detect that what type of threat is there accordingly the computer will work now next is the active protection system so this active protection system is called aps is a system usually for a military application designed to prevent anti tank missile projectiles from acquiring and or destroying a target so this aps is a system designed to prevent anti tank missile if it is any anti tank 
Any tank is firing the missile, it will prevent any projectiles from acquire, acquiring and or destroying the target. So, next is the electronic countermeasures that alters the electromagnetic, acoustic or other signature of a target, thereby altering the tracking and sensing behavior of an incoming threat guided missile. If any incoming missile is coming, it will measure the electronic, electromagnetic or acoustic or other infrared or something. So, the this electronic counter measure will generate a confusing or some other alternate system so that the missile which is coming towards the aircraft will be misguided and this will be shaped. So, guided or designed, designated as a soft skill, soft kill active protection measure. It's called SCAP. So, first one is called the, so in that electromagnetic, acoustic or other signatures of a target, thereby altering the tracking and sensing behavior of an incoming threat. So, it will track and the sensing behavior of the incoming missile, it will be changed and your, so this type of system is called the soft skill active protection measure, SCAP. Soft skill active protection measures. Another measure is measures that physically counter attack an incoming threat, thereby destroying, altering its payload, warhead in a such a way that the intended effect on the target is severely impeded or designated hard hard kill active protection measure it is hard kill means it will fire something that the coming target coming missile or coming bomb or some guided missile will be disturbed or its payload will be disturbed so that it can be protected or it can be destroyed so it is called hard kill it will be hit that missile which is coming. So, that is called the hard kill, uh, hard kill active protection measures. Here uh, uh, countermeasures I am showing here and I have here shown this the reference here, this reference and here also it is referring here. So, here aerial countermeasures. So, how we can do the aerial countermeasures? So, here we have seen here chef and flare. These are the chef, uh, sorry, chef and they are the flare. So, this chef and flare mechanism is there and they are used for aerial countermeasures. Generally, one has to distinguish between infrared and the radar countermeasures. So, we have to understand that which one is the infrared and which one is the radar countermeasure. So, the wavelength range between 0 0.8 and the 5 micrometer is a considered an infrared and the frequency range between 2 to 18 is considered as a radar. So, that is the difference. So, by that if it is in this range then radar will be considered and if it is less in uh, this wavelength then it is infrared. And here this you can see here, it is shown as a chef. This chef will be fired and this will look like this. Number of points, the fire points, infrared points will be generated and the coming missile, it will not hit here. It will may move in this direction or it may move in this direction. So, your helicopter or any machine which is flying, it can be safe. So, that is the purpose of aerial countermeasure and this chef and the flare countermeasures are very prominent of this type of uh, protection system, countermeasures. Now, next is the decoy flare. This uh, you can see here that we have different types of decoy flare. One is the in infrared decoy flare, radar decoy flare and the naval decoy flare. Okay, so these are the few things which which are shown here. So, IR decoy flares serves to counter infrared guided surface to surface missile or air to air missile. It is called AM and surface to surface missile, surface to air missile is called the SAM. 
So this infrared decoy flares serves to counter infrared guided surface to air missile or air to air missile and can be expelled from a craft according to an anticipated threat in a defined sequence. So it will fire as a defined sequence. This you can see here. This is the same. So this is the, called the IR decoy. IR decoy. So he, here you can see that how this can affect. If suppose your helicopter is flying here and the radar is here and it has detected that some missile is entering here. Then it, these things will be fired and number of flares will be coming with a very high power heat. So this uh, most of the missile will sense the IR sensors are there. So they will confuse and in place of here, they may hit here, hit here, hit here or here, here, here or sometimes the real aircraft also. It is not that 100% you are safe, but surely 90% it may be displaced. So IR required flares serves to counter infrared guided surface to air missiles, SAM or air to air missile and can be expelled from a craft according to anticipated threat in, in, in a defined sequence. So at a defined system, it will flare will go as I have shown. Next one is the radar decoy. To counter the radar guided missiles, shaft is used. These are copper nickel coated glass fiber or silver coated nylon fiber having length equal to half of the anticipated radar wavelength. So this we have to understand that radar required to counter radar guided missile. So you see that our uh, this uh, 500 that uh, S 500 missile, they are the radar guided missiles. So in this safe is used. These are copper nickel coated glass fiber. So they are copper and nickel coated glass fiber or silver coated nylon fiber having length equal to half of the anticipated radar wavelength. So wavelength half of that the size we have to use it. Third one is a naval decoy. Land and sea based forces can also use such countermeasures as well as smoke screens that can disrupt laser ranging, infrared detection, laser weapons and visual observation. So this you can see here that how this army on vehicle is spreading the smoke. This smoke screen will confuse the coming weapon missile and it will not be able to see where is the vehicle and it will ditch here in the smoke itself. And vehicle is already moved, but your missile will be trapped inside the uh, smoke because your uh, uh, missile will uh, get confused that this is the target because it is by the infrared and this can be uh, misfired. Same way in this Navy and all, if you see like this, some equipments are dropped in the water and this will generate the smoke and if any missile will get confused and this will drop here or here or here and your ship is not here. Ship has dropped and gone away but due to this smoke your uh, bomb which is coming to target your ship or aircraft will be confused. So like this decoy flares are also used for this purpose. There are some other systems like smoke grenade. These are the smoke smoke grenade. Here different types of materials are fixed and as and when you want take out this pin and uh, fire it, a huge amount of smoke will be generated and the incoming missile or your guided weapons will be trapped and it will get confused by this smoke. This you can see here a smoke generator used to cover bridge building activities during World War. So if you want to cover the bridge that you want to make, you are making a bridge during the war, but you want to 
cover that enemy should not be able to see. That time, this type of smoke drums are put here and continuous smokes are spread it so that it will not be trapped in the radar also and you can make your bridge and you can uh, complete your task. Next is the amphibious assault vehicles releasing smokes. So this you can see here that they are the amphibious vehicles. They can swim in the water. Also, it can travel on the ground and it is like armored forces, armored vehicles and this can be used in both the cases. So here also smoke is generated and this smoke can be used for the uh, confusing the enemy weapons or any guided bombs or the missiles. Now defensive aids shoot for the safe gripping. Uh, so what type of defensive aids we are using in fighter aircrafts? So I have taken here a, a reference of this SAB, SAB Gripen, a Sweden aircraft. Oh, what type of defensive aids they are using? Just I am going to explain here. So laser warning function that is called LWS 310. The laser warning functionality is achieved by using for a four LWS 310 sensors and is processor card in the electronic warfare controller. EWC its features high intensity excellent threat coverage and exceptionally probability of intercept POI for a single as well as multi pulse emissions. A unique feature of this system is that it is not only classified laser emission, but also identifies laser emission through a user programmable threat liberty. So this can also detect the any laser weapons are coming towards the aircraft. Next one is the radar warning functions that is RWS 300. So this is the radar warning functions. The radar warning function feature a compact wide band high sensitivity with high probability of intercept. POI solution, the addition of an additional digital receiver DRX transforms the radar warning functionality into a full-fledged ESM system. So it is radar warning that if any radar is nearby of the range 400, 500, this will detect that any aircraft is there or any radar is available, it will detect and warning will be given to the pilot. Here next one is the countermeasures dispensing functions that is called BOP series. So countermeasuring dispensing. So BOPL dispensers are controlled by a fully integrated SAF and flare dispenser controller that resides in the electronic warfare controller EWC. This allows for automatic dispensing under the control of EWC upon threat identification. The system can handle mixed payload per dispenser that is chef and flare mixed in each dispenser. Semi-automatic and manual firing capability is also provided. So in this it is automatic also semi-automatic also and manual also it can work. So it is countermeasures the dispensing function. So your flares and all it is automatically it will be detected if any threat is observed this will work and this will function accordingly. Next is the missile approach warning function MAW300 a unique optical design incorporating filter technology with purpose built image intensifier tubes and photon countering focal plane array processor ensures high sensitivity equal to long detection range. Each sensor uses a dedicated digital signal processor making use to distribute it. Okay, so these are the one, two, three, four, four items they are used for the defensive aid suit in a SAB Gripen like this. This other aircraft fighter aircrafts will also have such type of systems 
to confuse the coming enemy warhead. Now I will talk about HMD and the data link. HMD means helmet mounted display. This provides to primary flight information and weapon information to the crew whilst allowing freedom of movement of the head. So it will, pilot can move the head all the direction and all the equipments will be visible. So all the flight information will be on the helmet glass. So that is the very, and weapon information. So this is very good to increase the performance of the aircraft. Data link to provide transmission and receipt of messages under secure communication using data rather than voice. So in this data links are used for this purpose. So the data link is the mean of connecting one location to another for the purpose of transmitting and receiving digital information. So what is the data link? It is a means of connecting one location to another for the purpose of transmitting and receiving digital information. It can also refer to a set of electronics assemblies consisting of a transmitter and the receiver, two pieces of data terminal equipment and the interconnecting data telecommunication. These are governed by a link protocol enabling digital data to be transferred from a data source to the data link. So here just I am showing the helmet mounted display of a LCA Tejas Indian made aircraft. These are the, uh, this you can see here, uh, this one, this is the LCA Tejas HMD. This is the Russian. This is the Russian HMD. It is shown here. So it is just for your knowledge that I am showing here and here also HL Tejas of Indian Air Force features Israeli LB8-4 helmet mounted display and sight HMDS system. It is called the HMDS system. It is here and how it is looking, how the HMD will give information to pilot. This you can see here. All the information pilot will see like this in this diagram. So it is putting like this in this helmet here. Pilot will see like this and he can move the head here left and right all the places and this all this screen all the things will be very much clearly visible which may not be possible by the open eyes. So that is the advantage of such type of uh, helmet mounted display on the aircraft and our LCA Tejas is having uh, this uh, Israeli Ilbiet dash 4 helmet. This you can see here the same. What is HMD? A helmet mounted display is a device used in aircraft like heli aircrafts like helicopters and fighter jets to project information in front of pilot's eye. This you can see pilot's eye are there and this all things are visible. It provides the pilot with situation awareness and enhanced and digital image of the scene and weapons system displayed for action to the direction their head is pointed. So in any direction you can point your head but your screen will be with you only. So all any situation awareness, any type of threat, any type of problems, it will be visible to your eyes. So that is the specialty of the helmet mounted display. We have different types of fighter aircrafts in our Indian Air Force or Indian Navy. So this you can see here, I have taken the reference from here, indiandefense.quera.com and LCA Tejas at the Aero India 2015. This you can see, SU-30 Mark One. This is the helmet HMD of that. Mirage 2000, it is the HMD. And the Jaguar, this is the HMD. So one, two, three and four fighter aircraft, which our Indian Air Force is using. I have taken from this reference and I am showing for your knowledge that how this helmet is important and is very costly. Okay, so, but 
cost is not the matter in defense your accuracy your result is matter not the cost so these are the references which i have taken from this books moyer i and the series a aircraft systems mechanical electrical and avionic system professional engineering publication limited london and bury st edmund uk 2001 another reference i have taken http www.sab.com and this is the your another system which uh, another reference which i have taken so any questions you are welcome to ask i will be very happy to answer your questions you can ask the questions in this email y d d w i v e d i at the rate g mail dot com this is my email if any query you are you want to ask it 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 will give me ms pleasure and also i request to like and subscribe this channel so that i can get more motivation towards the delivering some more lectures you can also ask some topics related to aeronautics so i can make a video for you people thank you very much for the joining and be tuned for my ne next class also so thank you very much like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates